<sighs> okay, well, yeah, we just added Craig to the chat. Um, hi, everyone. Let's see if his ass, you know, put his ass to work. It's a bear. It's a it's a cartoon bear on Discord that we're using to record this podcast right now. I don't know if we can put it to work, Sergio. Why? <laughs> okay. Okay. So. What? No, you can just no, because it's just a little. It's supposed to be like innocent or something. You can't just like put. A, you can't just like put a little. Fucking put his ass to work. Okay, <laughs> fine. Fine, it doesn't have feelings. Well, okay. Hi, everyone. Today's... It does It's a robot. Today's podcast is being recorded virtually because Sergio is all the way over at UNT right now in their library, and I am at home right now. All right. Yes. That's true. I thought, I thought he was going to follow up with something. My bad. Okay, so uh, Sergio and I are recording virtually today, and today's episode is called Communication Error because... I, you. I, Uh, yeah, you get what I mean, Sergio. Yeah, so that's why. What? Which I what? Say that again. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, so that's why. I can't hear you. What? I, I think that's why it's called communication errors. <laughs> I could hear him the whole time. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, so I wanted to yeah, mess with Sergio because we have we. We have a clear, clean uh, recording today. I just wanted to mess with Sergio and making it seem like something was going wrong again. It took so long to get this working. <sighs> okay. It, so, it did, actually. It did, actually. We got so much shit in the way. It took us so long to make this, by the way. Oh, my God. We got to figure it out now. We got to figure it out now. So if we ever, ever want to do this again in the future, you know, we have yeah. our reference here. Yeah. Ooh, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. So, fucking... Um... I guess what what I'm trying to see right now is like I'm trying to see right now if if this is going well but also I wanted to be able to start today's topic for today AI technology okay so Craig Craig, Craig was on accident I didn't know Craig was going to be a part of today so what happened to, what happened today is that like um early, earlier last night I was actually using chat GPT for the first time. And I actually thought about some deep questions I wanted to ask it because I also knew that there were a lot of things that I always ask people questions about and I'm not really sure who to ask questions from. <laughs> that was a burp. You're fucking choking on cat hair. <laughs> No, it was just a burp. So it was spicy curry I had today. Oh, so, okay, okay. We'll continue. Okay, so uh, basically, I just I thought about what happens if I ask a uh, ChatGPT, you know, am I making the right decision by going to college, uh, even though I want to pursue comedy? So I actually asked it, and we're gonna look. We're gonna look at. We're gonna we're gonna look at some of the things ChatGPT and I talked about today. All right, they're fucking having the leaks out. You might get his ass canceled. Why? Why? I don't think I would ever get canceled for this stuff. This is just deep talks I had. Not with you. I said I'm worried about Chad GDP. I could care less about you. So go on. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Well, Chad GBT and I had this talk where, at some point, I asked it. I think I asked it at some point, like, am I wasting my time if I get a degree in theater at the University of North Texas in Denton? This is under the same question of, like, when I want to pursue comedy. Freaking Chad GPT, okay. in seconds, answered, it is not necessarily a waste of time to get a degree in the theater in theater at the University of North Texas in Denton, as a degree in theater can put you in a strong foundation of acting, stagecraft, and it's also related skills and helpful pursuing a career in comedy. That being said, it's important to keep in mind that a degree in alone does not guarantee success in the industry. And here's the part that I liked. The part that I liked is, ultimately, the decision to pursue a degree in theater at UNT or in any other program should depend on your individual goals and circumstances. It may be helpful to talk to people in the industry, do research on the program, and carefully consider your options before making a decision. 
that's the part I did like. I know everybody else will tell me that stuff, but so far I've been, I guess, forgetting. But I like having it right there written on me. So I've written on my computer screen <laughs> so I can be able to screenshot it and come back to it. Uh, oh, dude, this one was this one was really cool. So I asked it, what are some good habits for pursuing a career in comedy? Uh, there's this one thing where at some point, like, okay, this one right here. Okay, uh, what are some great successful, what are some great realistic goals and expectations to set for pursuing a career in comedy? And it's a great question. Here are some small achievable goals and realistic expectations to help you start your comedy career. Attend open mics. It's a good idea to attend one open mic every month. That, and it would say, you think you disagree? It should be want- much more than every month. <laughs> Well, that's the good news because it was also saying in another answer, you know, it it also said like once a week as well in another answer. I asked it twice just because. But anyway, number number two, write consistently. Set a goal to write at least 10 minutes every day. This could be new jokes, tweaking old jokes, and brainstorming new material. Write down consistently observations or just thoughts that you have very often. Build a network. Attend local well, comedy shows. <laughs> You're just curious. So it's number three was build a local network, attend the local comedy shows, open mics and events to meet other comedians and industry professionals. Follow them on social media and interact with them online. Create online content. Social media is a great way to so showcase your comedy, to showcase your comedy and reach a wider audience. Set a goal to produce one piece of comedic content per week, whether it's a video, a meme, or a joke. And keep learning. Attend workshops, seminars, and classes, new skills that, and techniques to improve your comedy. It's like it gives us this one little conclusion that says, as for not comparing yourself to others, remember that everyone has their own path in Germany and journey in in comedy. Focus on your own progress and growth rather than comparing yourself to others. Celebrate your small wins and achievements and don't let setbacks discourage you from pursuing your passion. I liked what ChatGPT had to say. It was so it was so encouraging. So you hated it. No, yeah, and it has nothing to do with particularly chat GP. I think it's just a self-help thing because I had to read a self-help book recently for a class. Yeah. It was the fucking biggest waste of goddamn time. I think I'm the least person that needs a self-help book. I was reading this shit and being like, I don't need to fucking like it's just if I felt like I was playing I felt like I was playing that was advocate with the goddamn book. Like like it was just telling me, like, are you really sure you're going to the cure? It's like, yes, I am. Stop bothering me. Like fucking I, I just I just think self-help is not a genre for me. I think it's literally the equivalent of like one man's trash is another man's treasure. It's like I think in my life right now, I feel fucking really great about it. Yeah. With what I, with you know, what I want to do and stuff like that. So I really could care less about self help or even advice like that. So whenever like I heard that, it, it it just sort of triggered that like book I read that I had to read for class, and I was just sitting there like, oh piece of shit. It's wow. like it's like I really I really don't need to hear this some of this advice, <laughs> but I get that you're curious. I want to know, like, what advice do you actually think was actually really bad? Like, what book were you reading? It's not about it being bad. It's about it, like, for me. It's, it's I know, like, yeah. Another man's trust, another man's trust. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to misinterpret it, because I know you weren't saying it was bad advice, but, like, I guess, like, what advice that normally applies Well, this is perfect to- for you, actually. I have the book right next to me, Noah, and I even highlighted multiple timestamps on here with uh, post notes. The fuck? I don't believe you. <laughs> I, I don't do. Be- I do. Okay, all right. I, 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 I can show you because the thing is, I had to read it for a class, right? So I okay. literally had to like go through it and put like multiple like sticky notes and shit. Okay, yeah, all right. You have it with you right now. All right, well, what's the book? Oh, the book is called How Will You Measure Your Life by Clayton M. Uh, Christensen okay. and also James Allworth and Karen Dillon. These are three people they got together. And also, it's, it also depends how you give out life advice, honestly. Like for J- Chad GDP here, like it sounds pretty ironic, but Chad GDP is a much more down to earth guy than this fucking book. Because when I was reading this book, like uh, the thing is, it, it was supposed to be like written by people like in business, by the way, who went to hip Harvard Business School and like other shit like that too. And the thing yeah. is, in order to give advice, what the book did 
was they actually went through a whole saga of a company's history and then went so this is how the company's history relates to what you should do in life because of this company it's like i'm not gonna lie if, if i'm getting a self-help book which i probably most likely will not in the future um if i'm gonna read it i could get less of a fuck about the businesses of hyundai ikea that fuck v8 juice you get at the store you know like some uk yeah. bank like I could guess yeah. less of a fuck about that. If you have your own personal story embedded into the writing, I'm willing to listen because that's your own personal story and your application of your own personal advice that you're giving onto here. And either way, even in a self-help oriented book, it's not like it's a fact. Like I can read some of this advice and be like, that does make sense. However, you can also look at the other side, which also makes sense. So no science, to, like, like, you know, it's like, that's the thing. Like no self-help book, self -help book is definitive fact, you know? Like different advices for different people so you know that just makes sense too and so i i would say maybe like half or half of this book or a quarter of it was actually all right but i literally skimmed through some of this shit because i was like bro i'm tired of reading about businesses it's like that's that's not what i got goddamn want to read yeah i was also noticing oh, yeah. how i was also noticing how like uh when it comes to self-help i i was watching uh so the self-help guy that I read, Mark Manson, I read, uh, I read two of his books so far, and I really liked him. And he also had like yeah. uh, made a lot of YouTube videos. And at some point, he even like has a YouTube video where he gets his first self-help book, uh, "The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck," and he fucking burns it yeah. in the video. And he says, "Yeah, self-help books aren't really good if they don't help you after the first one." <laughs> he just fucking yeah, says, I mean. "Yeah, he just fucking says like, yeah, like if self-help books worked." You shouldn't like you shouldn't need more than one. Like on average, actually, this was a study he found. I'm, I'm not I don't know where the study came from, so I'm not going to say it was. But it was something where a study that he found very recently where he found like on average, people who read self-help books usually get about seven of self-help books in their library. They buy seven of them. And he's like, you should only need one <laughs> if it fucking works. And uh, yeah, I feel like yeah. it's like that's true. Yeah, that's why, like, uh, that's what I do like about that self help author is that when he does do self help advice and he does really want to give people advice that doesn't suck, he tries to make it more interactive. Like, when whenever he ends a video, he says, Okay, try to do something on your journal right now. Like, try to write down things that you honestly think are holding you back and then work from there. I liked that. That was very nice. And it also goes down into like, you, you ever notice how whenever somebody gives you very insightful advice or things that they find like a new discovery, uh, even if it's in something like psychology, like, uh, okay, there's Carl Jung, right? I was talking about this with my friend. There's like his psychology of the shadow and how there's like a, there's always like a part of a person that we're afraid to be. Like there's a, there's always this part of us that we're afraid to admit exists, that we're afraid to admit is real like uh okay. like if you're very angry all the time or if you have like violent thoughts or maybe you just have thoughts of like running away and you just genuinely have like thoughts that you're very afraid to admit or show to other people i think about how the end of like a lot of uh people who talk about carl jung philosophy they always say shit like it's always good to integrate the shadow into your daily life. It's not about necessarily doing everything you want recklessly, but it's always about becoming a more balanced person. And then I hear that and I think, okay, well, I also want to ask, what does that mean in a daily life? What are some practical ways you can integrate your shadow into your daily life? And not a lot of people go into that. Um, Personally, I try to answer that question myself, but do you ever you ever notice that too? Like people who just give self help advice, they just always keep like expecting applause and shit. They keep expect expecting people to just say that they said something insightful or just like deep. Yeah, probably. You think so? You know, it's just, it's just it's just not for me. It's just really not for me because the thing is, you know, I didn't get to it yet. But here, I have a couple uh, things I highlighted in this goddamn book. I didn't. Yeah, so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. About. Okay, go on. Yeah, I know. So just some shit in here is just the most obvious fucking shit. Like there's a line in here. It says, but there is much more to your life than your career. Oh my God. My family matters. What? I, I didn't know that. That's what this guy's a genius. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> just shit like this. 
Right? Okay. It's like you have to make sure that you allocate your resources in a way that is consistent over your priorities. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you think I'm gonna go work at the fucking deli? Well, 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 I'm over here trying to get like you know electrician skills in some way. It, it, it's like it's like if I want to work out, why am I gonna go buy fucking pancakes at IHUB? You know? Okay. Okay. So it's just yeah. like you know that's just the most obvious shit like here that I was yeah. just reading and I was just like, dude, this is just or this one too. Later on, they also have like he brings out like sort sort of study like or like basically yeah. says something about like some people think when they have like children that. And they can do is like, you know, they can work like a lot when like the kid is born or whatever. And then they have to like spend time. And then like later on is like they grow older, they'll spend time with the kid. Right. And then yeah. because they'll be like, oh, well, you know, the kid's not really going to remember much like when they're little. So then when they're like grow older, then I can just chill with them. And then, you know, turns out, you know, like fucking obviously that's obviously not the case because, you know, if you do that, then, you know, like that is literally the development of the child. And they're going to like remember that shit and also just maybe not want to like talk to you as much because you were never around type of shit. And, and then it was like, so, yeah, just make sure like, you know, you have like a kid or something. Just, just, just make sure you, you know, talk with them, hang out with them, spend time with them. And I was like. That's the most dumb. It's so fucking obvious. It's it's like what? No way! If you have children, you have to spend time with them, and and then, and then if you do, they appreciate it. You know, it's actually really funny. That's like, uh, so it's actually really funny. Um, Mark Manson actually does have his own thoughts about effort and reward. And one time he talked about how things that are much more complicated, like developing a, a relationship with someone like developing a good bond with your family member and stuff it's actually not always like it's not always like if you spend one week every month with them or every day with them that doesn't always mean you're gonna have a good relationship with them it can be a little bit more complicated than that yes exactly yeah just so, something like that but this is just such a vague book as well yeah just in so many aspects so just because because of that alone and because of like trying to relate a company's history into my own personal life feeling so much mm. like superficial you know it's just like i feel like an actual personal story i think i'd rather be willing to listen and then get advice from that other than that so yeah this is more of a you know thing i had to read for class not necessarily a book i chose of my own accord to read but it, it can I tell you right now it's just not for me i think the self-help genre yeah. is not for me it's because of where i am in life and i feel like you know, I feel very com confident with my motivations, incentives, what I want in my life, what I want to do, blah, 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 you know, like, I feel like there's a lot of, you know, like, like, don't get me wrong, you know, exactly, that's what I mean, like, this is probably for someone else, this is probably for someone else, not for me, though, because I know there's plenty of people, you know, and the thing is, you know, I, I can't blame them either, you know, I feel like in a very fortunate position to be this young in life and figure out exactly what I want to do with my life, because there's a lot of people that, you know, go to college or they're in high school and they're like, what the fuck do I do with my life? You know? So the thing is, you know, you know, I am fortunate to not need some shit like this it's maybe for someone else. They need it. But for me, I do not, you know? So would you say that you have the problem of not being able to need a self-help book so you can never relate to somebody who does? Sounds like you need a book for that, Sergio. Well, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> it's just it's just yeah like I, I, <laughs> it's just, it's just if, you, if, if you buy my course right now for 39.99 a month fucking andrew tate no no dude literally okay oh, okay so oh, i was watching somebody last night uh one giant onion on youtube he's a really great guy he's a really good youtuber mm -hmm. he's the cat he's the youtuber who does shit like becoming the first discord moderator to take a shower <laughs> and he does that sh type of shit so last night he was just doing a stream oh, called okay. what he was what he was doing a stream called watching andrew tate for 24 hours straight <laughs> and fucking and he's just playing chess in the background too so every time andrew tate says something <laughs> sexist every time andrew tate says something sexist they'll just be like fuck i lost because <laughs> he just lost at chess so so he's like guys i don't know if we're ever gonna get this right and then people in the comments are like yeah you know we need to convince men that everybody needs to be given a fair chance and he's just like i don't know if i'll ever get this right i just lost my rook fuck <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like really background noise not necessarily paying like yeah. full on attention to it he plays ambient, fucking ambient noise andrew tate you're just so fucked up to have, if you think about it, to have Andrew Tate as your fucking background <laughs> noise. You could have just had fucking rain, bro. Just something normal. 
<laughs> so so anyway, I bring this up because like fucking Andrew Tate at some point the motherfucker is on the podcast. This is before he was uh, arrested and before he had um lung cancer and stuff. So he oh, yeah, sure. at some point he actually does say some shit like yeah, I think love is a beautiful thing. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not one of those guys that thinks that all women are just like for sex. You can only use them for sex. The fucking guy interviewing him starts laughing at him. <laughs> and fucking Andrew Tate like has to like admit like all right, all right. All right. Fucking <laughs> All right, you caught me. <laughs> He's like, ah, "All right, all right, maybe a little." <laughs> Maybe a little, but, but only a little bitsy, bitsy, bitsy little bit. <laughs> it, it was so <laughs> fucking, it was so fucking stupid. It's like, <laughs> yeah, the, I had to watch him be honest for uh, a second. I had to watch him be, when the interviewer asked, "Have you ever, have you ever been in love?" It's like, yeah, of course I've been in love. I don't, I love women. I love the idea of love. Like, I don't understand. I just don't understand why I can't love five women. <laughs> fucking that, that kind of opened my eyes. Drink to himself. That that's why I open my eyes to a lot of people when they're like, I just want to love everyone. Like, oh fuck, oh god, no, that's not real. Oh god, that's just narcissism. Oh shit, you just want to think that you're. Mean? That's like it's narcissistic to look at yourself to think about how beautiful you are and your idea of love is. If you want to love like five people all at once and then tell everybody that you love oh. five people all at once and be like, guys, oh, guys, I'm. So yeah, yeah. Like if, if you're like guys, guys, look at how beautiful my lo- understanding of love is. <laughs> like fucking that. Oh, okay. So I, yeah. I get what you mean now. Like yeah, yeah. it's always just but someone wanted to be like I think that's like uh, uh pa 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 polyamorous or like it's so I have never really I've never really figured out where a polyamorous relationship works. I've seen I've seen people online do it. I just don't really know if I really. And I've seen people in person actually do make like an open relationship work. I've seen them. I, I'm not really like good friends with them or anything. I've just seen people do it. I've never really figured out what makes a good open relationship work and when it's really just somebody not being able to admit that they're not actually okay with their girlfriend or boyfriend sleeping with other people. Like I don't know how to. I don't. I don't know when. Yeah, I yeah. think for me right now, like I think most people probably won't like be successful with like open relationships or like polyamorous things. So the thing is like, what a lot of people like don't realize is like, you know, if you know, if you can't make one relationship work with just one person, what makes you think you're going to make it work with two more people? Oh, fuck. I think a lot of people think that because uh, they think that the relationship they're in now is going so great. And and there are people out there who, don't even realize it but they they think like they think because they're not fulfilled by their partner sexually but they're fulfilled by them intellectually and romantically but they're not fulfilled oh, like, like sexually yeah they yeah what you say sexually sexual or something i think that that's what it means like when you like someone like in someone's intelligence i think that's what the word is well maybe but also there are genuinely people out there who who ask their partner hey i love you i don't want to but I, I'm not fulfilled with you sexually. Can I sleep with someone else while still dating you? <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I know some people do that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Like, just... fucking, I've read a book. I, about, I think, like, you know, I read, yeah, well, I read a book about that <laughs> once. Um, sorry, but that it was just a story of an author's life and how yeah, she realized it was a it was a bad dynamic she was forming with two men at the same time. It didn't work out. Spoiler alert. Um, wh- were you gonna say something? I cut you off. Yeah. You weren't going to say anything? I got the talking cunch. I did. I got the talking cunch now. It was like, uh, when it comes to that, I was thinking, yeah, like I think with relationships, shit, everyone just has different needs and different wants. So, like, I guess depending on who you talk with or who it is, then you know, yeah, I can see it working out. Yeah. It's like some people do think, like, they, they try to detach sex from that. Or being like, you know, it's like I just, you know, am horny and want to fuck other people, but I still romantically am only attracted to you. Mm. So that that can happen for some people. Wow. I mean, for me, uh, it doesn't doesn't work like that for me. I feel like if I was younger, maybe, but it's like I think I'm older now and just like, you know, it's just I'm I'm not really like you know like uh wanting to be like a fuck rabbit like anymore. But like I don't like when I was in middle school and high school. <laughs> 
yeah so yeah like it's just uh it's just yeah like for me that's not that that's not, that's not the case but yeah for some people like they, 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 they do want that so it's like the thing is i can't even you know like I, the, the, the thing about you know i, I can relate to all of this shit together to like the self-help books and relationships the thing about yeah. it you know is like i previously stated it's not an objective fact of like you know this is you know like you know just be like the self i was like oh this is the advice that you know i need the whole time that everyone follows it's like no 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 you know so it's yeah. like, this is this is why like you know everyone needs different advice and different wants so you know yeah. there, there might be general good advice for most people but it's not gonna necessarily target every single person you know there's some people out there who don't follow good advice either that are still in relationships and i i wonder how the hell like absolutely yeah like the sex can't be that good like why why like a like a lot of hard people... way no well, yeah, but I also know that many of the reasons why we stay in relationships, like so I, I stayed in friendships too long because I was more afraid of cutting them off than I was of actually making a difference and actually changing how I view them. Like I was more afraid of cutting them off and then like the repercussions of that socially, just like, you know, just I was more afraid of cutting a person off who people know I'm friends with more than I was af afraid of like staying friends with them forever and just kind of like, you know, just not being happy with that <laughs> fucking um so there's not yeah yeah right so i think that's how a lot of people do stay in relationships for way too long fucking like i've seen people legit have no trust in their girlfriend and straight up still date them like god damn like what the fuck dude and oh no, yeah for sure you know this is what we call codependent relationships it's there's, there's like there's, yeah exactly like there's all this self-help advice out there like waiting for you and you just fuck it like anybody like i can't be the first person to tell you dude you gotta trust her and then she's not cheating on you she just doesn't want you looking at her phone and fucking oh my god he just straight up would still not trust her oh my god it was like fucking months years of this shit you know, the, you, you, the, the reason the reason why i don't have to i don't want to say anybody's names because this happens with fucking anybody you'll meet ever like seriously there will be like no matter like what college or school you go to there are people you'll find who will like straight up not trust their partner like this fucking that's, anywhere, fair. that's, true. that's the thing just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean it's a good one you know yeah and most it's like, people they think like oh you know mm. i have a boyfriend girlfriend finally but it's like just because you have one doesn't mean like you know like you know is it a is it a quality one to begin with you know i know like i thought i had to be because, perfect i thought i had to be perfect before i dated somebody fucking that was that's it i think that, as as yeah have most of it figured out <laughs> that's guess. that's actually pretty nice though, you're, you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't want to have trust issues before going into a relationship. I know that's pretty fair to have. Like, I know that's pretty good to, to like, um, to know, identify what you don't want to have going into a relationship, actually. That's, that's what I just realized. It's actually a good idea to not necessarily achieve perfection, but to say, I don't want to have trust issues going into a relationship. Uh, I don't want to be in bad shape. And if I'm, if I don't have a six pack, that's fine. I just don't want to be, you know, out of breath when I run. And I also want to be able to have enough money to afford dates every now and then. And that's it. I think that's fine. All right. I mean, that's fair. That's like, you know, yeah. your own version of your own wants and needs for a fucking relationship. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's beautiful. Hey, okay. What were you going to say, though? Well, two things. One, uh, I've seen so many people, like, for me, like, I haven't seen, like, you know, Maybe like mistrustful like stuff but for me i've seen a lot of toxic like people that have like uh girlfriends or boyfriends and they're definitely in a toxic relationship and they still stay there and it's just like yeah just because you know like like like, like and, and you know i think i know i think i know the main reason some people do it and you know like it's just at least for some people i think it's because some people like you know they, they just don't want to be alone like some people think like you know getting a boyfriend or girlfriend is going to solve all their fucking issues it's not so by keeping that around them, like, you know, they, 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 they think, like, you know, they're adding that to their own personal value. So it's just pretty sad to see that, you know, it, 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 for me, like, I can see it boiling down for some people if they just don't want to be alone. So, yeah, like, you know, I'm just saying, you know, in a scenario like this, even relating to toxic friends and stuff or just whatever, it's honestly better to be by yourself than to be with someone who's just giving you a tougher time.
than they really should in your life. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Put yeah. that on a t-shirt. So, make, yeah, like, make it rainbow colored in June. Fucking. It's going to be a long ass fucking text. Yeah, fucking is. Dude, I've seen longer. Dude, there are people who put the entire B movie script on the shirt once. Don't ever forget that. You know, if that's fair enough, I, I can't. Yeah. I, I actually didn't know that fact, to be honest. You didn't know that? There's a guy who walked into my class one time. Like, I knew the shirt existed beforehand because you see it on eBay and stuff, but there's, um, there's, a guy, there's a guy who walked into my class, just fucking had the whole B movie script on his shirt. Yeah, and it was like you know typed in it wasn't like a piece of paper stapled onto his chest no like the motherfucker was like very tiny words very very tiny matter of fact i'm sure if you had glasses you could not see it i'm pretty sure you had to like look at, you had to microscopically look at that shit if you wanted to damn yeah, but it, it was there it was all there because i could tell from you could read the first words at least you could read like According to all known laws of aviation, there are no reason that a bee should be able to fly. And then at the very fucking end, it'll say some shit like, fucking like, good job, Barry. <laughs> you, can, you can read it. You can read it. It's just like, well, again, it's the whole script. So why would you, why would you stare at someone's chest yeah. that long? <laughs> Well, I mean, it's kind of their fault. Like they, they have the goddamn shirt, you know. Yeah, he expect he was embracing it the entire time. Every time somebody looked at his shirt, he was like, "Yep, yep, it's all there." He stayed there. He st he had plans and shit throughout the day, but he, he's like, "Yeah, you can look at it. It's all you there." What I mean? <laughs> he like had his whole yeah. had his coffee mug ready, just sipping. <laughs> Go yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, also, but one more one more thing I want to say on my stance. Okay. Of uh, well, that. <laughs> Bless Sorry you. about that. I had to sneeze. It's okay. Yeah, on my on my stance of this thing, if I were to you know do my own this, this self help bullshit, yeah, this is what yeah. I would advertise. I mean, okay, for okay. me, you know, I think it also depends the way you approach and talk about it. Honestly, yeah, because the thing is, I want to talk about things with just being like, you know, this is what worked for me. It might not work yeah. for you, but I'm just putting it out there for someone to you know see and you know try and attempt. To maybe like understand my point of view, yeah. so that's why you know whenever I talk about like advisor shit, that's the point I'm bringing it from. But some self help books are very arrogant. Like guys, I figured it out. It's like no, you yeah. fucking did it. Yeah, I know. Fuck out of here. So yeah, yeah, like like for me, like here's what I would say is like you know when it comes to toxic relationships, blah blah. blah mm -hmm. Like like two things I will say. Yeah. One, I, I actually haven't had that much experience with like toxic like friends because mm -hmm. the thing is like well no I, I have actually but the thing is uh. Like, I never really had to do, like, a definitive, by the way, I am cutting you off now. It was just more so it faded out over time. Like, you okay. know, just shit yeah. like that. Yeah. It's only happened a minimal amount of times. It's not like it happens, like, you know, like, fuck, like next Tuesday. But, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but that's just one thing I wanted to comment about that. And the other thing I would comment is, for me, the best piece of advice I would give to people and like, you know, like, just stuff like that is, like, I think, you know, this can also boil down to, you know, but by, by, by people don't want to be with themselves and blah, blah, blah. More people just need to like themselves, like self-love shit. Because, like, everyone wants to find love, but no one wants to find love in themselves. You know what I mean? And most people don't want to be by themselves is, is what you wanted to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, okay. Exactly. The thing is, you know, like, like, I'm not saying, like, you know, you have to be by yourself for the rest of your life. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I thought yeah. I'm saying you should be somewhat comfortable with, you know, yourself. To like be in like you know or just, just, just spend some time alone just by just by yourself you know no electronics no nothing just you and your thoughts and think about shit yeah and also just you know like 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 also you know try and like yourself you know, like like you know like, like yeah am I cutting you off? Not really. I was just gonna say like you know just you know like I'm obviously you know I'm not trying to say you know be narcissistic type of shit yeah. about like fucking I'm just better i'm the best yeah. like, no 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 you know <laughs> have confidence and just like yourself you know yeah. I, I think like you know that, that that's kind of that's my own little move so, that, so back to andrew tate for like one second because i didn't get to mention this when andrew tate was just like oh yeah you know i've been in love before and the guy was the interviewer asked him have you ever gotten your heart broken before <laughs> andrew tate was like yeah when i was, when I was 18 <laughs> yeah that's that's when it I, could hear, I could hear his voice <laughs> <laughs> his voice changed that's where it started that's why he wears sunglasses all the time uh, yeah to hide the fear of his eyes you know 
I know. Just thinking about thinking to that moment. I, I bet if we just like had a list of of uh, women's names and we just read them out loud to him, and we we watched him just to, we watched to see which one gave him the most reaction. That's like that's the girl who like broke his heart. We just say like, oh yeah, exactly. Heather, Jamie, Melissa, McCarthy. <laughs> We got him. Just fucking God. just said Melissa McCarthy because I don't fucking. <laughs> okay, but okay, that's like that's just one thing I had in mind um, that I just thought I had to say. Um, but I do think yeah, that there. Yeah, I know. I just thought it was a joke I just mentioned. We. I have no idea if this Discord recording is gonna go well. I have no idea if it's gonna actually because I don't know how to find it. I don't know how to find this recording at all. I don't know how to. Well, yeah, that's why I wanted to fucking test it out first and, and stuff, but you wanted to rush it in their way. So, like, all right, well, you, see you're happens. totally, well, to Sergio, you're totally fucking right in every possible way, but I'm glad we still ended up talking anyway. Fucking, you know, I can, we, we can actually, like, um, we can actually try to stop the recording now just in case and then pick it right back up. Or do you want to just keep going on with the podcast? Because I can still edit it either way. All right, fine. Just, 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 just stop it, and, and you can fucking like, uh, just, 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 just edit that shit. Fucking, we'll, we'll, we'll be back after the break, guys. We'll be back after the break. Coming up next, Sergio and I are going to talk more about how we ended up finding our own ways out of toxic self help. Oh wait, you know what? Something I actually right did want to mention. Um, mention it in yeah, part two. <laughs> and I would mention, and I would mention, I would mention my own parts on what I think about. Uh, T- t- toxic like self-help arrogance or some shit like that anyway see you
Uh, okay, and we are back on the podcast today. Greg is back in the sweatshop. So one thing I didn't get to ask uh, beforehand is now, obviously, I did have some things to say about self-help and toxic things about uh, what it means to be in a good uh, friendship or relationship. But Sergio, how have you been today? I've been really good, actually. Like, you know, so my morning was a little bit shifty. Like, yeah. but, but, but besides that, you know, like, you know, they're pretty good. A lot of hours today, just, you know, trying to help around. And, and, you know, you know, hands on more experience and familiar with like tech shit and electrician stuff. So, yeah, uh, you know, today is the day with, you know, I'm doing the podcast view. Going to go eat something after, too. And uh, yesterday was pretty good, actually, pretty big. Because uh, I could actually talk about that. I had my first job interview. Mm, shit. Okay. How did that go? It was actually really casual. It wasn't uh, as, you know, daunting as i thought it was initially going to be because okay. literally the thing is when i walked in there they had two cats like just walking around the fucking place <laughs> and then when i went to the actual interview office the fucking cat actually jumped on top of the interview table oh. so you know yeah the thing is when i was talking to the guy too yeah he seemed really down to earth too and the thing is it, it's mm. also a family-owned business too so mm. you know like it's not like super great type of shit like you know i can tell like you know they're very chill uh, yeah. You know, I felt like, you know, what we we're talking about was pretty genuine. I, I, I definitely showed interest. I asked a couple questions. However, yeah. the main concern is because I'm currently a full time student, I will have mm -hmm. to wait until summer around late May and early June to see if they'll contact me for this full time position because mm -hmm. I was looking for part time right now, but they're only offering full. So, mm -hmm. really, I, as much as I would like to get a part time job right now in my field because of full time student. So, when I go into summer, I'm finally an opportunity. To okay. Sergio, that's really great. And, uh, okay, explain to the people that don't know what your job interview is for. Oh, well, what well, my talk, job interview for it was it, uh, AV, which AV means. Yeah. And the thing is, uh, you know, this would align under electrician based work. Uh, this is a much more versatile uh, space. It's not going to be much more condensed into one particular job like in uh you know theater yeah. like if you're lighting designer or like you know your master electrician or your people hanging the lights you know it's a very definitive defined job of exactly the role you're going to do however in this position it's much more open like i really am just going to be trained on the spot of multiple things to do probably going to carry around a bunch of stuff too i might sell cables I might, you know, just work with rigging systems, you know, like like the curtain stuff, you know, like there's manual electric ones. So just that yeah. sort of thing. I don't even know myself exactly what I'm going to be doing because it's very vague. Like there's just so many different things that like, you know, yeah. you basically have to do on the spot and learn. So mm -hmm. this particular job interview I got in particular job is a little more versatile and different from the one I expected to get. So that's why this one's a little more shifty. But yeah, I mean, so far I did like the benefits and stuff I might get there. You know? I'll go about how that goes. That is pretty good. Yeah, Sergio. I'm, not, I'm not guaranteed, so I'm still, you know, like applying for different things. Obviously, you know, just keeping out my options open. I feel bad. I didn't I didn't pay attention to any of that. I, I feel like fucking shit. Oh well perfect. That... You can listen to the podcast after this. <laughs> That is the best thing ever. We should we should do podcasts with more people. That way, like no, like everybody should do a podcast. That way, they can just like fucking be like, oh, "I'm sorry, I wasn't listening." That's okay. You can listen tonight on Spotify. Fucking, fucking Sergio, Sergio. Okay, can I go to your graduation? Probably, yeah. Honestly, do you know when it is? Uh, I don't fucking know. Maybe August. August. Whoa. Yeah, because there's a particular class I have to take. I have to take classes in summer because the thing is, those um, classes, one of them in particular, is literally only available for summer. And it's not in course, it's a requirement. So by default, I have to fucking take a class over summer. That's bastards. Bastards. Yeah, basically. So I'm not going to graduate this yeah. summer. I'm going to graduate in August. Yeah, 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 we can probably come. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, freaking Sergio, do you ever think about just having an AI make a degree for you? Do you Sergio. mean like 
Yes. Like they do the work for me, or no, no, like, like they literally, okay, they, like okay, everybody can Photoshop anything, but like, listen. So what if? Hear me out. You get an AI to just make all the fucking requirements for the class, and then okay, you get an AI like voice to text speech to fucking be on the other line on a phone ready and then when you tell your you know fucking like uh, your job interview person yeah i have a master's from harvard university in uh lights and sound fucking they if they fucking hmm, interesting well let's just call them up real quick and you call up fucking harvard and then they say hello welcome to harvard university yes we have sergio prentice on our roster of most excelling students we could have that sergio we could have that we could have that shit what <laughs> i think i'll get in trouble for that shit <laughs> sergio that'd be fucking great though <laughs> no like who wouldn't believe it okay well that's like that's like, they, that's like what they did with um uh what's it called so this is actually a school i wanted to go to um this was a uh, a school called what's it called what's it called uh oh southern university southern ss something i don't know it's like that one school in la that one school i probably shouldn't say because i still want to go there <laughs> fucking but they, they had a whole scan they have they had a whole scandal that everybody knows about where they just kind of kept le- letting in kids just because their parents paid more money <laughs> and their parents were already, oh, already I know what you're rich. talking about. Yes. Yes, those that school. They just they had like a really bad news reputation after that. Like people just kept getting in just because their parents are already in the know and already rich and their auditions, you know, you're supposed to audition for that school and they were just their auditions didn't even matter. There are people who were already gonna be accepted who were rejected because oh well the rich white kids wanted to get in. Fucking Oh Ugh. my goodness. If if only everybody was like Chris Rock and just fucking like expelled their own kid from the fucking school. Oh, absolutely, dude. I think I think that was still hilarious. I mean, not gonna lie, you know, life lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, in, in case in uh, case some of you people didn't watch the Chris Rock special, Chris Rock was was noticing his own daughter's behavior, just getting, you know, more spoiled and stuff as time was going on, and so. He didn't want, and so when his kid, you know, got in trouble on a trip, on a field trip at school, she was not worried about it at all because, oh, you know, dad, he's got this, you know, I'm going to stay in no matter what. It's fucking so Chris Rock actually hated her behavior. So Chris Rock just went to the school and told the school to please expel my daughter. Please. <laughs> please. Oh, that guy's really funny. It's just good discipline. It's actually good discipline. It is. And any time she had to apply to a new school afterwards, she had to say why she was <laughs> expelled, why she'll never do it again. <laughs> Fuck it. And, and, she, and she's a much better person now because of it. So, I don't know. Just any kid who wants to go to fucking... University of Southern California, you know. <laughs> Just remember, you ain't gonna be disciplined. You ain't never gonna be <laughs> fucking. You ain't never gonna be a rock. Okay. Nope. So, uh my God. So, I think Sergio and I were talking a little bit. That was my own, my own fault. I keep moving around a lot. It's messing up the audio. Okay. So, Sergio and I were talking a little bit today about how. There was this thing where, like, self self help books can be a little arrogant, right? Um, there was this one thing I was finding out, which is very funny. How um, I found out that apparently it's been known for a while now that people need information from different packages. Packaging is really important. It's like people are just kind of weird. Is this is also what I found out from watching like a, another YouTube video about this. Um, where are, you ever notice like how your mom tells you some advice and throughout your life, you know, you don't really listen to it or something, or sometimes you do, but like, there's some people you, they're, you know, they're right about something. You just don't listen to them. Like when your mom says shit, like clean your room, you just fucking don't, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. But when you go out to a friend one day 
and your friend would tell you, oh, you know, it's really healthy to keep a good room clean. It's good for your, uh, it's good for your immune system. Shit like that is like, oh, oh, okay, then. It's like, then you're going to listen to it. Sometimes it works the other way around. Like sometimes my friends would tell me some shit I didn't want to hear. And then my mother would tell me the same thing. But because it came from my mom, I listened to it. Um, that's I get, a, yeah. I get yeah, that's another reason why, like, I think, like, that's that's like a really good reason why both self-help books, you know, exist. But it's also another good reason why I read a self-help book that is okay, that has already made peace with the fact that I might not listen to everything it says. That's that's just why I like yeah. it. That's why I like reading books like that, because it knows very damn well you always got to, like, get the information from somewhere else sometimes. Okay, here's, here was like, there's one time I had a very bad friend. Uh, they're not my friend anymore, but they were my friend very recently. I was going through a very hard time, and... They watched me go through a hard time with other people and, you know, they kept giving me advice and, but they also just kept giving me like, like very forceful advice. Like it wasn't very like, you know, take it or leave it. It wasn't, it was just very like, very mad at me when I was still sad the next day. Um, and this person, you know, one day, like a couple months later, I told her like, you know, I was watching a philosophy video on YouTube the other day and, you know, I was actually very happy that I learned that you can't control people and that's okay. And you just have to let them go and do their thing. And then she got like so mad at me because she was like, that's what I've been trying to tell you. And it's, and I hated that because I made it seem like, oh, like, oh, I didn't listen to her. No, that just means that I fucking, I just didn't always get it because he, I didn't have an actual philosopher go into details. Like when it's just your friend saying it. Sometimes it's somebody who's also a little unsure with themselves, so they'll fucking misconstrue it. Or, or maybe it just doesn't always register with everybody. Sometimes you have to go through a lot to really understand something. I had a, yeah, I had a, I had a really bad, I had a really bad friend, and I had somebody who was like really just so mad at me for growing. Like, wow, fuck them, Jesus. So, lesson of the day, guys: if if someone's ever mad at you for growing and becoming a better person, fucking. Do not feel bad about cutting them off. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, eventually, yeah, because, I mean, the thing is, you know, that sounds like, you know, dumb or exaggerated, but some of those people do exist. There are some people that, like, you know, yeah. like, they don't like they don't really want to see you grow for they may, multiple different reasons. Some of them, it might, it might be envy. They might get jealous. Yeah. Or some of them, you know, like, 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 uh, like, like, like they see you grow and they compare themselves to you. And then, you know, they're like, oh, we're not in the same boat anymore. It's like, oh, what the fuck? Because like, that actually happened, like, with uh, my sister. Like, she had a friend. And the thing, thing is, like, my sister got into, like, some sort of program thing. But the thing is, like, her friend did it. And then, like, her friend slowly just started, like, being kind of, like, cold or, like, like that. It's just like, dude, that's kind of an You're being kind of an asshole. Like, fucking, like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, I feel like a good friend should be supportive and you know just be happy that you know you're doing good with your achievements and your own personal lives and stuff like that yeah. so like if someone goes like hey you know i i i i, I got like this job dude and you know like even they go like hey i won like an emmy fucking mark trade awards and shit like that you know just some sort of award even or like some sort of thing they're happy about yeah. you know be, be good about it you know feel good about it be like you know what i'm happy for you you know you got a lot of things going blah blah you know, d d d don't fucking go like, man, fucking it should have been me. Has there ever been a person who won a Mark Twain Award and an Emmy at the same time? I don't know, man. It's just a fucking example. Well, maybe if they're winning the goddamn oh, fifth grade award, wait. you know. Oh, fuck. I think Bill Cosby has. He's he's definitely won oh. an Emmy and he's definitely won the Mark Twain Award. I just realized that. Okay. Fucking. Okay. Well, what else? What else can we also mention, Sergio? What are you most happy about with where you are? With you know, you're about to get into a new job. You're about to, you know, you're about to hear back from them at least. You're and you're actually about to graduate from UNT. Where are you most happy about now? Just with anything. I guess. What are you most happy with right now? That's a very hard question to answer, considering I am. I feel very content with so many things in my life. Honestly, I think. Yeah. I would I guess say that's, I would that's... definitely say my mental state. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like you know, mental health is very fucking important. You know, like I feel like you know, like nowadays it's very good that a lot of more people are aware of it and willing to discuss it. But mm -hmm. I also think you know they should be willing to apply and see how it should get better, right? Because you know you can discuss something, but you should also put that into action. 
-hmm. So I would definitely say that my mental health is definitely like probably some of the best it's been right now. And I think that is like helping me view a lot of things better because it's like, you know, I feel like, you know, like, you know, other things like that I can probably do, like, you know, get a job sort, sort of shit. So, you know, so I'm, I'm just content with it, it's, it's hard to answer like where I'm content, like with one thing particularly, because I am content with just multiple different things, you know, like, you know, you know, like I, I got like, you know, you know, good things in my own personal life going yeah. around. You know, my career is starting to like do some stuff like that. And the thing is that I feel good about it too. Is like you know, it's not like I'm doing like you know, like I mean, my my plan is to you know, I'm gonna do like my career, get some money, and then I'm gonna go full time comedy. You know, yeah. but the thing is, I'm not gonna completely ignore comedy either. Like you know, on weekends yeah. or like even after I'm done with work, I'll try and like you know, put into work like like you know, into comedy. I just, so I just I just want to like I just want to say like when when the fucking thing when I asked Chat GPT by the way, I asked Chat GPT with like like oh yeah like what's a what are some good um goals for comedy for pursuing a career in comedy it said once a month at an open mic and then i asked it again but this time what are some realistic expectations it changed its answer a little bit to once a week at an open mic and then you you are the motherfucker that's like yeah it should just be once a week it should be way more often and then i haven't seen you at an open mic in years <laughs> Yeah, because I do fucking full-time school now. You think I'm jerking off at fucking home not doing shit? Uh, I have yet to see the proof. I have yet to see the proof. My degree. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Keep talking, keep talking. You know, you know, fucking... I have yet to I'm gonna see... I'm going to go ask GDP how to murder and get away with it. <laughs> no, that's against their guidelines. No, dude, no. You can't even ask Chad GPT, is it bad that I jack off? Yes, you day? can. You can't. No. Yes, you can. Fuck it. So someone made him say the N-word. I can do it. Okay, I've never seen that before. Okay. I have. Okay. Good, good, yeah, some good manipulation right there, you know? Fuck their ass up. Okay, okay. Well, all right. So I meant to cut you off there because I wanted to interject with that. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted you to feel bad that you don't go to an open mic every week. But you told me. I don't you feel bad at all. I mean, maybe you might. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I'm very much more guilty than you. <laughs> yeah, because the like, thing is, you know, like, it's it, it's like, the thing is, the thing is, no, you know, like, it's not even like, you know, we make like a thing and then like we like puzzle it off. No, like when we were looking for open mic on the weekends and Fridays, we couldn't yeah. find shit. Yeah, we, we definitely couldn't. Dallas is a little bit tricky when it comes to finding an open mic. Um, yeah, so it's yeah. like, you know, like, honestly, like, I don't feel bad yeah. about it at all, because the thing is, like, you know, like, mo but the thing is, I I'm not just sitting around jerking off and fucking doing, like, you know, useless shit either. That's like, you know, me. no, it's like, you know, I'm like, literally, that's, okay, well, yeah, that's, that's my job. Hey, that's, that's why you feel job. guilty. But for me, it's like, I'm literally <laughs> a full-time student, you know, so it's like, yeah. trying to find the time for that shit is actually, like, nearly impossible considering you know like i am literally like an hour away from like that and like shit like they're an hour and a half even depending yeah. on the traffic so it's not yeah. even like you know and i don't have my own personal car either so tra yeah. the transportation is mainly the fucking killer it's, it's not really a matter of do i want to or do i need or do i want to or like can i it's literally i fucking i literally cannot because i don't have the resources i don't have the money i don't have a car i'm doing college you know so it's like you know it's, it's like i would love to yes it's just you know, it's hard to find, like, dates that fit in my schedule. You know, I actually don't like where I, I took this, because I actually was just trying to make you laugh this entire time. I wasn't actually trying to make you feel bad, but now that I realize, you know what, maybe I took it too far. Let me let me take it to a I got self-help for you. <laughs> S fucking Sergio, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, fucking, I have never met somebody I respect more in the field that I always think, man, I always want to make this guy laugh. So I want you to know that, okay? I definitely appreciate that thing. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 we'll work on no, no, no fucking hard feelings type of shit. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving out okay. my you know, point of view. <laughs> no, I get you. A lot of people, a lot of people can probably hear that too. Like, I, I try to see, I try to make this podcast something that other people can know for, like, if they try to start up comedy or like, if um, if they just want to hear something in the background while they're knitting. <laughs> but like no, that's fair yeah yeah like i definitely know like one of my friends literally like talks about like he's finding podcasts and shit so like he literally mm -hmm. like kind of like maybe not the fucking knitting part but i know he puts that shit in the background when he's doing some other shit yeah so i definitely 
always love hearing whenever you're actually, you know, happy with your life. And I'd always love hearing whenever you do something good for yourself. I cannot wait till you graduate. That'll be awesome. Oh, it definitely will, yeah. dude. Because the thing is, yeah. you know, besides starting off my own career and getting money, blah, 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 I'm just actually yeah. looking forward to having much more free time yeah. into, like, you know, doing comedy, you know? Yeah. Because there's actually, yeah. you know, what I like, you know, like fucking. So, yeah, you know, just just if I could find a way to make a, a livelihood with comedy, I definitely, you know, would be, like, content in my life yeah. in terms of that aspect of my career, you know? Yeah, there's some things out there where, like, I don't know what else I'd be okay with monetizing with other things that I am passionate about. But it's not just that, like, other things that I find myself either doing a lot. Like, okay, so I do Pokemon shiny hunting a lot. So I don't know if there's ever, like, a way I would ever decide, you know what, I'm going to be a full-time Pokemon shiny hunter. And I would just be, like... a you know, like a Twitch streamer, mm. and like I would just be shiny hunting Charizards twenty four seven. And the thing is, it's like I don't know where. Like, if I could monetize that and say, like, say I could make like a hundred grand a year off of that shit, right? I don't. Which you can't, but like, say you could. Uh-huh. I don't even know if I would do that. Like, I literally don't know if I would actually sit down and be like, like five thousand four hundred sixty three, nothing, and fucking. Just playing Pokemon Scarlet every day. Like, I. There's got to be, like, other things out there that I also have to consider. Like, hey, maybe I can turn this into a job. But I think when it comes down to comedy, that would be, like, the one. If you, if you told me I had to do it every day, I would love to do that because I, I realized very quickly last night that comedy is actually something I do want to start committing myself to because it's something where I can fit a lot of my ideas together. It's something that just kind of fits with mm-hmm. political satire, my advocacy ideas. It fits with my music ideas that I want to do. Like, I can be a comedian first and then start everything else there. Uh-huh. Like, I've never really, like, I was always afraid of, like, picking one idea because then I would be, like, I would deviate from my other ideas. Like, I would never be a musician if I went into political science or I would never be, like, a TV show creator if I never went into um if i if i if i went into political science i'd never be a tv show creator but if i never if i never go into political science then i never make anything different with all the things that i do know so that's why i want to be a comedian because then i can actually do a lot more with that um just yeah because... everyone has all, everyone has all different reasons yeah yeah but so we don't have a lot of time left sergio is there anything left you'd like to say uh I literally got, yeah, I literally got five more goddamn minutes before I get kicked out of this goddamn pot. <laughs> but yeah, uh, right now, mm, yeah, not not right. The thing is, you know, I was thinking about you know talking about the Pokemon shiny hunting shit. You know, I'm really good at it. What I do is I go on eBay. You know, I have two dollars, and then Shut I up. look up like the Pokemon, and I just Shut get up. it. Shut up. <laughs> Shut I don't even have to do all that process of fucking four hundred ninety three. Now I just go two dollars. Got it. One. Shut up. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, man. Shut up. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay. Don't tell anyone I did that. <laughs> okay. okay. I did it. I did it. I didn't even imply anything. That's I on know. you. I know. Okay, okay. I hope everyone has a good night. Okay, I hope everyone has a good day. See you later. Have Thanks for waiting. Day, Thanks yeah. for waiting for so long for an episode. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have the next one out right, right by next week, right? No, a wink, wink. <laughs> wink. Okay. Hope everyone has a good day. Fucking see ya. All right. All right. That's it. Y- y'all have a good one. <laughs>